So I woke up in my bed and this was a false awakening obviously, I wasn't actually awake. But I woke up in my bed and I heard some noise outside and it sounded like a chainsaw or some other heavy machinery. And I thought what the hell is that? Why is it so loud? Maybe my neighbours are doing something, some building or something like that. Uh, maybe there's some construction work going on on the road by my house. So I thought hey I'll look out the window and check it out. So I lifted up my blinds, I looked out my window and I was shocked, I was genuinely shocked by what I saw because in my garden there are normally a bunch of bushes and some trees that have been growing for you know whatever 20-30 years now and I looked out the window and they were all gone all of the bushes had been gutted, all of the trees except for like two had been cut down and the two that hadn't yet been cut down were currently being sawed through as we speak and it was weird because I was looking down at this scene and it felt really painful it was like watching someone I love die or something. It wasn't like the reaction you would expect to seeing some trees getting cut down. I think it was because in that moment I realised that everything that had been growing in this garden for years and years and years, all of that was gone. It was just like tens of years of progress just completely wiped out in a matter of minutes. Which is something that I'll get back to in a moment because I think there's sort of a message behind this dream. So at this point I wanted to save the last couple of trees that were left so I ran outside as quickly as I could and I started shouting at the people saying to stop and to get away from the trees. And they did and they started packing up and running off except for one of the people who stayed behind looking very smug about the fact that he'd cut all my trees down. And so I went up to him and I asked him why did you do this? And this part of the dream is a little bit vague in my memory but I think that he actually suggested that there was no reason, that they just did it for the sake of cutting them down. Which obviously aggravated me even more because it just felt completely senseless that they just cut down all these trees that have been grown for years. Now I woke up from this dream relieved to find that the entire garden was still there and no one had chopped it all down. But I laid there in bed for a bit just thinking about this dream because it occurred to me that yes there was a bit of a message behind this dream. You see in the dream there were all of these trees just like in my real garden that had been growing for 20-30 years whatever and some people came along and in a few minutes all of that was gone. And isn't that just a perfect metaphor for life? Because in life we have all of these things that build up for years, friendships, relationships, jobs, life experiences, our own lives themselves and we build up and up and we have all of these new experiences and so on but every single thing that we encounter in our lives is ultimately going to disappear just like those trees and when it does happen it can be very quick like that. Someone that was perfectly healthy can get sick and die in a matter of months. Countries that were at peace can suddenly go to war practically overnight. We can suddenly find ourselves all getting sick like with the current situation. And regardless of how healthy we are, what we try to do to delay the inevitable, it is inevitable. Each of us is eventually going to pass away. So there's nothing that we can cling to. It doesn't matter how long those trees have been growing, eventually they're going to die or get cut down. And that's kind of a scary thought and it's something that I think we try to avoid a lot of the time but I don't think that we necessarily should. But one of the other things I noticed about that dream was that everything that was happening was external to me. I was looking at these trees being cut down and I felt a deep pain inside myself. I felt like, almost like I was the one being chopped down. But I wasn't. It sucks that the trees were being chopped down and it sucks that we have to lose all of these things that we experience in our life eventually. But the one constant until the very last moment of your existence is yourself. So I think one of the things we can do to have more of a chance at accepting non-permanence is to develop better relationships with ourselves. Because at the end of the day we are that one constant. We are the one person, the one thing in our lives that is going to be there from day one, the moment we pop out of our mother's womb to the very last day before we're put in a coffin. And I think we constantly neglect ourselves. We're always worried about what other people are thinking of us. We're always worried about what things we have. We're always worried about our future goals and past things that we did or said or thought. We try throughout our lives to be good people to those around us and to treat our family and friends with respect and kindness. But do we always show that same level of kindness to ourselves? After all, if all of these trees that are growing, and by trees in this analogy I'm talking about everything, all of your possessions, all of your friends, all of your life experiences, if every one of these trees is eventually going to be cut down, then shouldn't you invest some time on the tree that is going to be cut down last, the tree that is going to be there throughout all of this, you. So my first piece of advice is exactly that. 
try and stop some of your negative self-talk. Something that I actually like to do when I catch myself talking negatively about myself is actually to just repeat whatever I said, but in a comical voice, like say Cartman's voice from South Park or something like that. I just imagine someone repeating what I said and mocking it. And when I do that, it's hard to take anything that I say negative about myself too seriously. And you can also just correct it. Each time that you have a negative thought about yourself, you say, I'm an idiot, I'm stupid, blah, 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 then correct it. Replace it with a, another more positive thought. It doesn't matter if you necessarily believe the thought, it's just about what you tell yourself often enough because then you will start to believe those things. And my next piece of advice is regarding those other things, regarding your family and friends, regarding your possessions, regarding your experiences, your home, all of this. And that is that you need to become more present. If you're not present now with all of those things, then you are going to miss them when they're eventually gone. I'm sure you can think of examples of this already in your life where perhaps you had an old friend and you sort of started drifting apart and then one of you moved and you regretted not spending more time with them. Or perhaps you regretted not spending more time with a relative before they passed away. But this doesn't just go for people, this goes for all of the things in your life. This goes for all of the activities, all of your hobbies, all of your items that you own. If you're not actually present with them when you're doing those activities or when you're using those items or when you're going to those places, then you are not going to get the full experience out of them. And then when they're gone, you're really gonna miss it and you're gonna regret those things that you didn't do. So how do we become more present? Well, once again, I'm gonna advise you guys to meditate if you aren't already. But along with that, just take a moment when you're doing things, when you're spending time with people to actually shut off your brain a bit, to just kind of bring yourself back down to earth and say, look, I don't need to think about what I'm gonna do an hour from now. Let's just focus on the activity at hand, on enjoying this person's company, on enjoying this hobby of mine, and not worrying about tomorrow or about yesterday. Take a deep breath and remind yourself to just be here now and it's gonna make a world of difference. I hope that you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed the dream story and also the little lesson that we got from it. And if you'd like to learn more about dreaming, about lucid dreaming in particular, check out my lucid dreaming book, The Lucid Dream Book. There'll be a link in the top right hand corner and down in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and enable all notifications so you can stay up to date when my new videos come out. And if you wanna keep watching right now, check out one of those videos on screen. Go watch that and I'll see you there soon. Take care.